Several years ago, one of my Waodani friends and one of the elders there, in fact, one of the men that helped kill my father, decided that he wanted to go over to a village called Kaweriuno to preach to them. But the people said that when Yui got over there after a three-day trek, the people in this village, none of whom were Christians, didn't want to hear what he had to say, so they didn't feed him. And without food, he had to turn right around and make the three-day trek back to where he had started out from. When the people told me about that, they said, Bave, what if we ourselves had an ebo, which translated means a would-be, that's what they call an airplane. They said, what if, what if we ourselves had an, had an airplane? Then we could take Dewey over to Kawariuno, just like that, and he could then teach the people. And if we took medicines with us, then the people would see us well, and seeing us well, we would teach them how to walk God's trail. Now, these are people that grew up in the Stone Age, and they were wanting to go to the Space Age in one jump, and I didn't think it could happen. But Pimenta, one of the elders, came here to our tech center in Central Florida, and in just six hours, he was able to fly that unique aircraft all by himself. And I'll tell you, the first time that he and Gallo landed that plane in Waurani territory, the people just could not believe their eyes. That here this aircraft came out of the sky and when it landed, they always expected to see foreigners flying. But this time, they saw one of their own people flying. Then a number of the Waurani young people who had been riding the fence, the spiritual fence, wrote me notes saying, now I believe that we too can walk God's trail. It was because they finally saw a member of their own tribe actually playing a role that they thought that only foreigners could play. Well, just a few months ago, I was down in the jungles and Pimenta, another one of the elders, came to me and said, Babe, I'm going to be gone for a few hours. I said, Pimenta, where are you going? He said, I'm going over to Kewariuno. There's a woman over there who's sick and she's bleeding and I'll bring her back here so we can make her well. I couldn't believe this, so I walked down the trail to the little airstrip and watched Tementa and some of the other Waurani believers pull a strange little aircraft out of a hangar, and then Tementa got it all set and he took off. And within one hour, he was back with that sick woman. And then the Waurani carried her down to their little clinic, a clinic that they built and a clinic that they manned. And pretty soon, one of the Waurani came back out to the airstrip and he said, Babe, we don't have to send her to the mission hospital. We can take care of her sickness right here. And I thought, that is what Christ has commissioned us to do. Not just to fly our airplane with our medicine and our technology and our know-how in to, to plant the church, but then to teach our indigenous brothers and sisters who have the same commission so that they can carry on what God has called us to start. How many of us go through life trying to find something meaningful to do when really Christ has given us a challenge that will bring more significance to our lives than anything else? Before he left, he told his 11 disciples that God had given all the authority in the world to him. And then instead of telling them what he was going to do, he challenged them and commissioned them to go out and take his good news to the whole world. And then he said, not only that they should go out and make disciples of all the nations, but then he went on a step further that we sometimes forget. He said, and teach them to observe all that I've commanded you. And I think that there's a secret to fulfilling the Great Commission right there. You know, it's like a relay race where we run where missions run the first lap and then hand the baton or the torch on to our indigenous brothers and sisters who already live there, who already know the culture and the language, and by the way, who already like the food, like tree grubs, for instance. If we'll carry out Christ's Great Commission the way he taught us to, one person sharing with another and teaching them to share with another so that everybody who's a believer has finally a place in the Great Commission and can fulfill that place. 
then we really do have a chance to see that in our lifetime, people from every tribe and nation and tongue on earth can hear the good news.